Okay, welcome back. We're going to finish up the armor of the outer armor plate here, and it's going to conclude the first part of our leg texturing section. We're also going to go over how we can occlude any sort of normal map, height map details on pre-existing folders containing uh, any of this information using utilizing once again different modes of the blend modes within the layers section similar to how Photoshop works. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started here. Now where we last left off, uh, we were on part two and we just put our dirt on and again made a folder to help keep us organized and everything. So now that we've finished that, Let's go ahead now and go into adding just one more smart material on there. And uh, for that one, I'm going to choose to go with uh, plas uh, I believe I'd like to try plastic glossy. So I'd like to have something with a little bit of a helpful boost in specular material. So let's just give a look and see what that does for us. I'll just left click and drag and put it right above part two. And as you can see, it already takes away just about almost everything on here, but don't let that discourage you uh, in any way. You can almost see that the material almost changes entirely. Again, it's not a big deal. The goal on this is not to be able to just drag something on there to see what it looks, but to drag something on there and recognize the potential of where you could take it. So. In this case, that requires a little bit, again, of understanding of the anatomy of the smart material. In this case, let's bring this to a little bit of a red again. We're going to go with a bright red. So I want to go to the plastic base. Usually the colors are uh, in any smart material are always listed as the first uh, layer or the lowest layer down. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I like that a little bit. That's kind of what I want to go for. Maybe something like that would something that has a little bit of a good sense of contrast for us. Uh, now let's see what else we can mess around with. If I were let, let's let's play around and see what we can get out of this. Again, reckon, trying to recognize the potential where we can take it by experimenting and exploring. So if I were to go into this folder, Plastic Glossy, I'm going to try to affect the overall opacity, which again affects all the folders within. And I'm going to see if I can take that down to around maybe 34. And now I'm going to turn off Plastic Glossy just to look at the difference between the two. And I kind of like that look. Now, the vision that you got to be able to obtain is is that it's not covering over the entire model it's covering sections of the entire model in any way you see fit so uh, that's kind of what we're going through with uh, for this one again it's sort of uh, we can even push this again a little bit further and uh, maybe take this part down to maybe 41 and then once again reiterate and see what that looks like and you kind of see that it's a little bit better maybe you don't like the bump or the specular surface on here well remember you can always change those things by either affecting what it's going to look like in uh, the height map channel by changing the overall opacity remember these little bumps here that you're seeing those bumps are from the dirt map smart material. We'll, t we'll show you a quick way to get rid of them if you don't like them very much. Or if you want to drag them above or over the uh, material, you're always welcome and free to do that as well. So uh, with that said in mind, I'm kind of happy about what that gives me. What we're going to finish up with now is uh, a bit of a height map cover. It's going to be, what, what it essentially means is, is that it's going to be a sort of like a, a fill layer that caps the overall generalized uh, capacity of everything. So you can control the overall fill and everything that you see here. Now that requires re-manipulating different uh, uh, fill, uh, blending modes here through certain channels. And we're gonna go over that again here pretty quick. 
So to do that, I'm going to just show you right now. I'm just going to make a fill layer, and it's going to be over the plastic glossy. And this fill layer, as you can see, is white. We want to take away the color. We want to take away metal. And we want to take away emission. Now, this is what we're left with. Now, for roughness, or I'm sorry, for height map, I'm going to leave height map the same. I don't want any details or height map info to happen. I want it to be as smooth as possible. But, or in other words, I want the height map to cover up over all of these. And to do that, I have to change my blend mode to just basic normal, as it would in Photoshop. And as you can see, you're already covering out all the height map information that's on here. It's no longer blending in with its previous blend mode. And again, that's going to be a, kind of an important one down the road uh, for you. Even if you change the data on this or change the slider, it's not going to make any difference. It's a constant fill color that's just all unanimous, unanimously being raised up or down in black, all black, all white, all some degree of value of gray. So there's another reason for that. We'll get to it pretty quick, but that's what we're going to be doing there. Uh, the next one down is going to be roughness. Now the roughness, I'm going to tweak a little bit, like so. And again, the roughness map, I I don't think there's any... Uh, uh, it's roughness, as you can see, it's sent to n uh, normal, and so that's why you're not seeing any conflicting roughness values from plastic part 1 or part 2 glossy, because it's pretty much covering everything over here. But again, what we're trying to establish is a fill layer that you can change opacities and controls with. In fact, I'll call this fill layer the control layer. Now, I did leave a normal map layer on there. I didn't know if there was any normal map uh, value information that was being left, but I'm just going to see if that changes anything. I believe there's normal map of uh, value data that is in the height map, but it looks like it got weeded out there. So I don't really have to worry about that too much. So now that I have a control layer that has height, rough, and, and normal uh, channels activated, all set in normal mode, they're basically now occluding and covering up everything that's below it because it is on top. Now. This is what I want uh, you guys to realize. You can change, this is where the control part comes in. We can change out the opacity in any way to give us a little bit more of our uh, specular info back. And then that goes to the, and if you want more of that specular info, you can just bring that down like so. Kind of like that one. I kind of enjoy that. Same thing goes with the height map now. I can kind of bring in a little bit of info. And if I don't, and I know dirt is in part two, so if I want, I can bring back some of that dirt uh, somewhere around here. I think it's in there. I think it's also in the normal, so I'll have to go through and uh, mess around with getting normal maps uh, to go through. Like so. So that's going to be how we control our fill layers and such. Now this little painted plastic area, this is just getting you started on setting things up. It's not really meant to be the end-all be-all. You know, I don't want you to think in this mode of, you know, you're done. I want you to think of this mode of, okay, now how you got all the pieces set in on the board. How do you want to manipulate all the pieces that are set on the board? Do you want to go through the hex pattern and start manipulating and painting back more, more material or less material? 
or change out the material to be a little bit brighter. You know, I want you to get into that mode, that state mode. Or maybe you want to duplicate the hex pattern so it's over uh, there. So that way you duplicate two layers and then add a black mask over it. And then you can paint back varying degrees of brightness that you can once again change out uh, on here, like so. You can do that, you know. Uh, I want you to really start thinking outside of the box of what it is I'm trying to teach you, what it is I'm trying to convey to you. Because in the next one, we're going to be building off of this concept here. And for that, it's going to be constructing the under layer that goes underneath here. That's the Griebel-like wires and things like that. It's going to be basically the stenciling uh, aspect of this course. So we're kind of done with the first half of uh, creating and establishing our textures. Uh, feel free to drag anything out of order here. And it's pretty big time in, uh, emphasized on that. Drag anything out of order to your liking. Like maybe you want to turn the, the dirt and you want that to be on the top but you don't like the bumps on the dirts, but good thing you know how to uh, manipulate, how to manipulate uh, height map channels so that bumps aren't an issue for you, you know? Or maybe you want different amounts, more amounts of dirt to overload into this, you know? That part, again, goes down to click into the dirt uh, folder, click into the mask, click into the mask editor where the generator is, we already went through balance and how we can get more uh, work out of that. We can get more of uh, dirt out of it. We can change the color of the dirt. We can change uh, the roughness of the dirt so it doesn't contrast so heavily against uh, the shiny specular areas. We can do all that because we already have. I want you to be able to, and I'm sorry if I'm sounding like a broken record, I want you to explore and experiment. It's the best number one way you are going to learn. So with that said, uh, we're going to, in the next lesson, we're going to be working on painting a, uh, the overall red leg plates mask. And we're gonna show you how our control layer that we uh, have uh, put into play is going to be used to uh, manipulate all this height map detail to give us a sense of thickness and depth when we chip away from the red uh, leg plate.